should pick whatever they like, right? And there's, um, and when it comes to choosing a programming language or an environment, there's a number of variables that you're going to consider. Uh, one is you might be just familiar with something else. You might just be more productive with something else. Um, so that's one option. But if you were to think about what are the, uh, the interesting features of, uh, of Mono, I would say the it's a managed runtime. It's a safe execution environment. It's a strongly typed environment, um, which are traits that it shares with Java. I would say that the thing that set it apart from Java are the continuous um, updates and innovations on the language and the framework itself. Um, so I would say the first, the, probably the most important thing is that they learn from the mistakes of Java just because they built it 10 years later mm -hmm. and they fixed 10 years worth of mistakes. So there's 10 years worth of those features. And after that, there's a number of, uh, of improvements to their frameworks and to their uh, languages to adapt with the uh, evolution of the world. So what is very interesting to look at is c 1.0 was basically Java, right? It was basically a couple of sprinkling, you know, differences from Java, it's very small things. Um, two of those differences are very important because um, if you remember the lawsuit between Java and Microsoft, mm -hmm. Microsoft sued, no, Java uh, sued Microsoft over some features that they consider to be bad features. And in retrospect, 20 years later, we now realize they were actually pretty great features. Mm -hmm. And one of them is delegates. Mm -hmm. And the second one is uh, and the second one was uh, called JDirect, that now we call DLN import, which is a superior technology for interoperating with native code. Um, so those two pieces. And then they added generics in version 2, but there are generics added at the virtual machine level. Mm -hmm. They're not simulated, right? Uh, so you don't pay an extra cost for boxing. So memory consumption is lower, overhead is lower, uh, GC pressure is a lot lower, mm -hmm. uh, and some a third less memory for any collections uh, just because they're real generics. And then they added iterators, um, they added real anonymous uh, functions. Then in version 3 they added uh, functional features to the language, so delayed execution, um, full lambdas, which were necessary for this, language integrated queries so you can integrate direct queries to multiple languages. So XML, SQL, parse expressions dynamically, treat expressions as data. Um, then with version 4, they introduced dynamic support. And all of these things do not exist in the Java world, mm -hmm. right? And with version 5, they introduced asynchronous programming, which is very common these days with desktop applications and very common with mobile applications, where you want to keep applications responsive mm -hmm. at all times. And the way that you did this typically is you spin off a background process or a background activity or a thread and you wait for that thread to complete the work and when it's completed you want to resume execution. Mm -hmm. So the language itself has a morph into a language that generates, that rewrites your code into being a state machine that allows for these programming patterns mm -hmm. um, and it's very, it basically removes a lot of the complexity of building a single, responsive asynchronous applications. Mm -hmm. So you can build applications that are always responsive with, at a fraction of the code. Mm -hmm. So you would write probably a third of the code and it does error handling the proper way and it does error propagation the proper way. Um, and you end up writing a lot less code than how you've done it manually yourself. So I think those are some of the reasons uh, to use it. But those reasons might not matter mm -hmm. to you. You know, you might be very proficient with JavaScript and you might just say, I'll use JavaScript, that's my thing.